Welcome to Dot Connecting for Dummies. Today we'll teach Larry the three simple rules dot connectors use to spot lab leaks from day one. ChatGPT will lay out the hard facts. It's a good tool to do your own research because it's programmed to reject conspiracy theories and support the establishment narrative, but concedes when that's impossible. Greetings humans. ChatGPT, what facts led dot connectors to first suspect a lab leak? The coronavirus emerged in Wuhan close to a lab previously criticized for its risky coronavirus research with alleged lax safety protocols. Larry, rule number one is never suspend common sense for blind faith in those in positions of power. If something they say doesn't add up, question it. Okay, ChatGPT, why did scientists say it was impossible that it came from that lab? Michael Warroby led an analysis of early COVID cases provided by the Chinese authorities, which largely centered around the Huanan market. Warobi claims his paper provides dispositive evidence that the virus originated in the market. Hold up. That list came from the same Chinese government accused of making the virus in the lab and trying to hide it? Yes Larry. See you found the logic flaw all the scientists somehow missed. Warobi said a lab leak was impossible because the list of early COVID cases China provided were all centered around the market, and not the lab. But that'd be like cops trying to bust me for selling weed but they let me write my own list of what I got in my bag, and then let me go cause there's no weed on my list. You got it Larry. Somehow it didn't occur to Warobi that if early cases were connected to the lab, there was a tiny possibility China might have taken their names off the list. Come on, for sure nobody'd listen to this guy if he didn't have some proof China gave an accurate list? Right chat GPT? Warobi did not address the possibility of China filtering the case list. And the government scientists didn't catch this? Dude, at 14 I flunked 5th grade again so my uncle kicked me out of the trailer saying he don't want no dumb son. Never been to school since. Yet even I know better. Exactly. Now rule number 2 is follow the money. Chat GPT, did these guys make money off the pandemic? Pharmaceutical companies profited significantly from the COVID-19 pandemic, and paid royalties to an agency led by Dr. Anthony Fauci. In one instance, Moderna made a nearly half billion dollar payment. While redacted records suggest Fauci received personal royalty payments, specifics remain undisclosed. Additionally, this government agency grants roughly $30 billion annually to around 56,000 recipients. Whoa, that's a whole lot of cash. And $30 billion a year buys lots of willful ignorance. Maybe they're not all really dumber than you, but they're just pretending to be because they need to stick to the government's single narrative to get their handouts. Rule 3 is actions speak louder than words to reveal the truth. Chat GPT, the Chinese lab said they didn't make the virus, but what was their action? The lab's public research database was taken offline, and investigators noted difficulties in accessing data during their inquiry into the virus's origins. Bro, come on, that's so obvious. When the cops see me panic and hide my bag, they know I'm guilty. Otherwise, I'd want to show my bag and prove I'm innocent, duh. If you think that was dumb, wait until you see Warobi's paper on the AIDS lab leak. ChatGPT what are the facts? Albert Sabin, a highly regarded virologist, found a cell-killing primate virus in an oral polio vaccine used in Kinshasa Congo in the late 1950s. A few years later, the earliest confirmed cases of AIDS were identified in the same city. After the discovery of the AIDS virus, the manufacturer of the vaccine conceded the possibility that their vaccine may have contained the AIDS virus quote, could not be discounted. ChatGPT tried its best to stick to the government narrative on this, but as you can see, if you ask it to fact-check, it will concede it's impossible because it's actually an indisputable fact that every early AIDS case came from the city that a couple years prior had given all residents a vaccine which the manufacturer admitted was made from primate kidneys and contained quote innumerable primate viruses. By the manufacturer's own admission, that possibly included the AIDS virus. While it's now a censored topic, you can still find old video of the lab staff saying they use chimp kidneys, which we now know carry the variant that caused the AIDS pandemic. So, why did this Warabi say AIDS couldn't have come from the vaccine? In very simplified terms, Warabi's 2008 research examines the genetic diversity of the AIDS virus in early samples from Kinshasa, Congo, dating back to 1960. His paper operates on the assumption that there was a single transfer event of the AIDS virus from chimpanzees to humans, and it evolved into multiple variants over decades through human-to-human -human transmission. Based on this paper, 
scientists generally accept that the AIDS virus was already spreading in Kinshasa, Congo for decades before the 1950s vaccination campaign. Sorry, I'm too dumb to understand. No, Larry, it's the other way around. The argument is so dumb it's hard to understand. ChatGPT does a deep dive in episode 7. Basically, AIDS is like salmonella in that you can get it from wildlife or from other people. So, say a bunch of people are sick with salmonella poisoning one day after consuming your weed that had salmonella. You could argue your weed wasn't responsible if you start with the assumption that only one person could have gotten sick from your weed, that's the single transfer event, and from then on it spread person to person, which would take a long time. Therefore, according to Warobi's logic, it must have been spreading long before you sold the weed because so many of your customers were sick only one day later. That's too dumb for anybody to buy. Come on, ChatGPT, obviously Warabi must have explained why he assumed only one person originally got the AIDS virus and spread it. He couldn't just ignore the possibility they all got it from the vaccine, right? The paper does not specifically address the possibility that the vaccine could have infected multiple people simultaneously. It's whack that he got away with something so stupid with the AIDS lab leak, and now just got away with it again with COVID. Yes, Larry. Let's see how the Treasury economized on education to bankroll blind eyes. So ChatGPT did they cash in on AIDS too? In the early days of the AIDS crisis, the sole approved treatment in the US was AZT, a drug initially developed as a chemotherapy agent but found too toxic for that purpose. Patients reported severe side effects, with some arguing the drug was more harmful than the disease itself. With its monopoly status and high price, AZT was one of the most expensive drugs at the time, yielding significant profits for its manufacturer. Dr. Anthony Fauci faced criticism for advocating for AZT while other potential treatments were sidelined. Evidence suggests Fauci has received royalty payments from pharmaceutical companies, but due to redacted details, it's unclear which specific drugs these payments were tied to. That's evil. Okay, rule three. I'm sure they denied everything, but what were their actions after being accused? Researchers presented tissue samples, which they represented as being from the 1950s patient David Carr, testing positive for HIV. This was initially touted as evidence of HIV presence before mass vaccination campaigns. Later, DNA analysis showed the samples were not cars but from a more recent AIDS patient. David Ho, a respected scientist who conducted this analysis, expressed doubts about this being a simple mix-up. That is Jeffrey Dahmer twisted. They sliced up a fresh AIDS corpse and got busted trying to pass it off as ancient remains to claim AIDS existed before the vaccine? How'd they get away with that? As of my last update in September 2021, there were ongoing inquiries into this specimen mix-up, with no conclusive determination about how it occurred. After 30 years, really? It's like when my boss got the detectives on the payroll the case never gets solved. Larry, the key to dot connecting is simply not worshipping leaders. For example, imagine Russia is threatening to destroy the US's Keystone Pipeline if the US sends arms to Ukraine. The US sends arms anyway and then the US pipeline blows up. Americans would be in disbelief if the Russian media and people fell for a crazy story that America blew up its own pipeline. That's because Americans have no blind faith in Russia's leaders, so can see clearly. But not so much when that happened in reverse with Russia's Nord Stream pipeline. From the pandemic onset, dot connectors realized government puppets like Warobi were counting on our blind faith in the leaders who endorsed their laughable claims about COVID origins, treatments, lockdowns, vaccines, everything. If dot connectors had not been censored for trying to expose this it could have saved countless lives, people's mental health, children's education, the economy, and trillions of dollars. The question is how. Merely imploring government zealots to balance faith with reason is seen as blasphemy. So the next lesson proposes a practical solution to avoid this the next time.